Hi, it's Neil Spears, the Hardwired Music Maker. How are you doing today? So, sometimes we want to have some kind of control for our DAW to make certain things like automation, volume control, that kind of thing, maybe some extra controls for the transport. It's nice to have those things on a little control pad aside from just clicking on the keyboard. But some of those are very expensive. And if you don't have a lot of money, you're always looking for deals. Well, I found this deal. It's pretty cool. This is the Steinberg CMC CH channel controller. I got it used for $25 at my local Long and McQuaid. So I thought, well, what the heck? You know, they have a good return policy. Let's give this a shot. You can see all kinds of labels on here because it is designed for Cubase, not Logic, which is what I use. For Logic, I wanted to see if I could make it work. I programmed it. Well, I programmed Logic to recognize its signals to be able to use certain functions. This one does pan, but I'm going to change that and I'm going to show you a cool trick with that. So stick around for that. If I press this, it actually mutes the channel. This solos the channel. This one plays the channel. And this one records. But what else could I do with it? Well, this one bypasses all the effects on my channel in Logic. This one turns on and off the metronome. This one opens the arrangement track. I think is the best thing ever because that's the one I use all the time and I don't like to have four show up. This one freezes the track to reduce my computer load if I need to. This one creates a track stack, which is a folder which acts as a summing bus. This one I've got set to go to the very beginning of the track. And this one goes to the end of the last recorded region. So I mentioned this one does the track stack. Well, this one opens and closes the track stack so that you can see what's inside it or close it up so that you don't have to have them all open all the time. This raises and lowers the volume for that channel. Whatever channel you're on, it'll raise and lower. So you can do automation. This is way nicer than using a mouse for doing that kind of automation. Let's get a little bit deeper into this, shall we? It's really nice when you get one of those faders like the Personas Mark II, the Mackie unit, Behringer's, you know, there's a lot of them are, that are out there that have presets for Logic Pro, but some of these older units don't work that way. So this can be done apparently with any controller that has buttons and stuff to play with. We're going to go into control surfaces and we're going to go into controller assignments and we'll do expert. So no... So you can see I've already got a lot of stuff set up, but let's do volume. Click on learn mode, adjust the volume on your slider, and then you adjust it on your device. And then they're linked. Okay, so let's double check it, make sure it's working. And you notice on this unit, you can tell exactly where it is. And if I move it on the screen, it works there too. So some of the buttons come on automatically. I don't know why. If we hit freeze, turn it off, it stays on. But if you hit mute, turns on, solo, play, I'm not going to hit record. Here we go back to the beginning of the track. For buttons like this, we're going to go into key commands, Edit, stop, and go to beginning. There we go. We're going to learn a new assignment. And we just press that button, and it is learned. OK, so if we're playing. It stops and goes to the beginning. We're going to go in and learn to do this knob with a particular trick that I think is really cool for automation. Now, I'm not one for using these for panning. 
you know, I can use my mouse to set it and forget it. You know, unless I'm doing something crazy, this will do it just as well. And it'll do a bunch of other stuff too. So we go into Logic Pro, Preferences, Automation. We make sure Automation Quick Access is on. Click Learn Message. And then we twiddle this button a whole bunch and say done. Yes, it'll work for the volume. Now hide automation for the moment. But you gotta but you gotta twist that a whole bunch more. So let's open automation and say we want to do pan and we want to have some more fun with the pan so let's do touch and then single band eq and maybe we want to we're gonna do a high cut which means that Basically, it'll just bring in what we want at that moment. Notice that frequency is now there because that's what I last touched, so to speak. Thank you to the I'm a Music Mogul channel for teaching me that particular trick. I think that is really cool. So there you go. Using any MIDI device to be a controller. You can do that with keyboards, you know, if they have sliders on them, if they have pads to hit. You can do all kinds of great things with them. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Please do remember to hit the like button. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.